Good day, beloved of Christ. Welcome to prayer for Friday, the 15th of July. This being a Friday, we begin with the penitential rite. Let's have a moment's quiet and we'll begin. Let us confess our sins against God, our neighbor, creation, and our very own selves. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is our light and our life. O come, let us worship. Psalm 37 is a long psalm and is broken into two portions. We will say the first 18 verses. This is a psalm in what's called the wisdom tradition. The wisdom tradition includes parts of the psalms, Proverbs, the wisdom of Solomon. This literature is intended to instruct us, to tell us about what wisdom really is, what a good life really is. This is a beautiful psalm and it gives us a lot of instruction about finding the happiness of holiness. Do not fret yourselves because of evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong, for they shall soon wither like the grass and like the grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Take delight in the Lord who shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in the Holy One who will bring it to pass. God will make your righteousness as clear as the light and your just dealing as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for God. Do not fret yourself over the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger. Leave rage alone. Do not fret yourself. It only leads to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while the wicked shall be no more. You shall search out their place, but they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash at them with their teeth. The Lord laughs at the wicked because God sees that their day will come. The wicked draw their sword and bend their bow to strike down the poor and needy, to slaughter those who are upright in their ways. Their sword shall go through their own heart and their bow shall be broken. The little that the righteous have is better than great riches of the wicked. For the power of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. Let us pray. God, our strength, give us the humility to trust in your loving care and the patience to be faithful in seeking your kingdom, that we may come to share in the inheritance of your saints through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our readings skip through Joshua. Today we'll be reading chapter 4, verses 19 to 5, 1, and also Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 to 14. The people came up from the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month and encamped at Gilgal on the eastern border of Jericho. And Joshua set up in Gilgal the twelve stones they had taken from the Jordan. He charged the Israelites as follows. In time to come, when your children ask their fathers, What is the meaning of those stones? Tell your children, Here the Israelites crossed the Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you crossed, just as the Lord your God did to the Sea of Reeds, 
which he dried up before us until we crossed. Thus all the peoples of the earth shall know how mighty is the hand of the Lord, and you shall fear the Lord your God always. When all the kings of the Amorites on the western side of the Jordan, and all the kings of the Canaanites near the sea, heard how the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan for the sake of the Israelites until they crossed over, they lost heart, and no spirit was left in them because of the Israelites. Chapter 6, verses 1 to 14, The Siege of Jericho Now Jericho was shut up tight because of the Israelites. No one could leave or enter. The Lord said to Joshua, See, I will deliver Jericho and her king and her warriors into your hands. Let all your troops march round the city and complete one circuit of the city. Do this six days, with seven priests carrying seven ram's horns preceding the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times, with the priests blowing the horns. And when a long blast is sounded on the horn, as soon as you hear that sound of the horn, all the people shall give a mighty shout. Thereupon the city wall will collapse, and the people shall advance, every man straight ahead. Joshua, son of Nun, summoned the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests carrying seven ram's horns precede the Ark of the Lord. And he instructed the people, Go forward, march around the city, with the vanguard marching in front of the Ark of the Lord. When Joshua had instructed the people, the seven priests carrying seven ram's horns advanced before the Lord, blowing their horns, and the Ark of the Lord's Covenant followed them. The vanguard marched in front of the priests who were blowing the horns, and the rear guard marched behind the ark, with the horns sounding all the time. But Joshua's orders to the rest of the people were, Do not shout, do not let your voices be heard, and do not let a sound issue from your lips until the moment that I command you, Shout, then you shall shout. So he had the ark of the Lord go around the city and complete one circuit. Then they returned to camp and spent the night there. Joshua rose early the next day, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord, while the seven priests bearing the seven ram's horns marched in front of the ark of the Lord, blowing the horns as they marched. The vanguard marched in front of them, and the rear guard marched behind the ark of the Lord, with the horns sounding all the time. And so they marched around the city once on the second day and returned to the camp. They did this six days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The image of the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord around the walls of Jericho is a very striking image. We can imagine the peal of the trumpets. Those are the shofar. Shofar are traditionally used in Jewish worship. Some commentators consider them being used as horns of war here, but I think there ought not to be a blurring of the lines between worship and war here, because in truth, it is the Lord who has gone into battle. It is the Lord who has promised that the walls would fall upon the seventh day if the people were obedient. The Israelites under Joshua's rule are worshiping the Lord and waiting for the deliverance the Lord will bring. Imagine yourself as one of the people of Israel who were commanded by Joshua to be quiet and not to say a thing until they were commanded to give the loud shout. Would you be in a trusting frame of mind that the Lord would do what the Lord has said the walls would fall? Or would you be of more the doubting mind? Let your imagination run for a bit. Lord, teach us to seek you in the days of our troubles. May we be trusting in your deliverance. Amen. We turn now in intercession. Lord, we have listened to your word, and now we ask you to hear our prayers, spoken from our hearts with faith and hope. May each of us, in your grace, see our own imperfections, and realize that the only person we can change is ourselves. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and for all people, that we would not be judgmental, but learn to see what is good and great 
in others around us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, by your grace, may our words always be kind, spoken from a loving heart. May our intentions be positive and our motivation be pure. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who find it hard to speak kindly, for all who are harsh or deceitful or judgmental in their speech. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died. May their dying be swallowed up in your victory, and may they know that they did not labor in vain. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our loving Creator, you have spoken your word to us from a heart filled with love for your creation. May your word sink deeply into our hearts as we offer you these prayers through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. My friends, may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warmly upon your faces and the rains fall gently upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you and all that you love in the hallow of his hand with the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Friday, TGIF. We are meeting tomorrow, Saturday evening at 5 o'clock for Zoom evening prayer, followed by a social time. Hope you can make it. Every blessing this beautiful summer day.